Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here's your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 30th of August 2025. Plenty to talk about today, that strong storm that's barreled into southeastern Australia overnight now moving out into the Tasman Sea but still causing all sorts of wind related problems through parts of Victoria, New South Wales and even in towards southeast Queensland. This storm is now a uh, reducing threat to the Australian mainland but we still do have some significantly strong wind gusts to be talking about. We'll visit the rainfall forecast up in towards far north Queensland or at least what's left of it and talk about some long range weather uh, aspects that are on the forecast now for, across northern and eastern Australia. All the details on these weather events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you're brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning for your Saturday morning. You can see the low pressure system now moving out into the Tasman Sea in the latest radar and satellite frames. It made a bullseye right through the Bass Strait last night. It really uh, managed to thread the needle basically to move through the Bass Strait, which is why it was able to keep such uh, strong winds coming through towards Victoria New South. South Wales throughout the course of last night. Some of the strongest wind gusts recorded were between 100 and 120 kilometres an hour into the southwest coast of Victoria, especially around Portland and Warrnambool. We also had some wind gusts up to the 110 kilometre an hour mark through parts of South Australia and some personal weather stations on the exposed southeastern coastline around Robin Mount Gambia actually picked up gusts to 122 kilometres an hour, but not sure how accurate they are. Tassie was spared the worst of the storm, but the snowy mountains in the Victorian Alps got absolutely hammered. And you can see these wind observations really begin to increase as I zoom in here. The storm is definitely not over yet. You can see Gabo Island Lighthouse at 84 kilometers an hour out of the southwest. Oak, uh, Hogan Island here in Wilson's Promontory, both at about 80 kilometers an hour out of the southwest. And you can see still blowing uh, definitely a gust drop in towards the Victorian Alps as well. Falls Creek at 69 kilometers an hour. Mount Hotham, I'm not sure if there's a weather station here that's available on this uh, map. Yeah, you can see here uh, 32 kilometers an hour right now. But wind gusts last night got to 128 kilometers an hour. So very strong winds indeed. And it certainly was a full on blizzard across parts of the Victorian Alps and into the Snowy Mountains. You can also see some strong and significant wind gusts currently being reported right up the New South Wales Blue Mountains and you can see currently we've got winds between 40 and 50 even up towards 60 kilometres now through parts of the Blue Mountains and you can see outside here at Maroondi Gap outside of the Barrington Top still some strong winds there uh, 45 kilometres now north of uh, around Glen Innes and you can see winds are also quite gusty into the Brisbane metro area just through southeast Queensland 48 kilometres an hour gusts at Toowoomba uh, 56 kilometres an hour gusts at at Brisbane, so it is definitely quite windy up there as well. The storm is moving further out to sea and it is going to become a larger weather system throughout the course of today, but we're expecting the system to reduce in how strong it's expected to be as, as it does get larger. And it's also going to pull away from the New South Wales coast, which means we're only expecting another few hours of strong, significant wind gusts before the wind gust threat does completely reduce and this storm pulls far enough out into the Tasman Sea later today and into tonight, uh, where it is no longer a concern for Australia at all. We're still expecting some strong winds to occur into parts of the Bass Strait, especially around Gabor Island Lighthouse, Hogan Island, Wilson's Promontory, you know, the windy observation centres there, and we'll still see some strong wind gusts into the southeast and the Illawarra coastline of New South Wales, and there'll be some gale force winds occurring across the Blue Mountains as well throughout the remainder of today, so it will still be quite windy. The storm is most certainly not over, but there's only a few hours left of these significantly windy conditions before they do begin to reduce below severe thresholds. It is a very, very windy weather system. You can see the storm has taken a battering moving through the Bass Strait and all of the land interaction that it's had that's really struggled as a result, and it's weakened and substantial actually to a pressure of 995 millibars. But you can see the storm here still producing some very strong wind gusts. The forecast model is estimating wind gusts around midday to exceed 125 kilometers an hour, sufficiently far enough offshore from New South Wales as to where it isn't a big concern, but we will still see some very strong winds around uh, Wilson's Promontory, Hogan Island, and also around Gabo Island Lighthouse into the southeast corner of New South Wales and Victoria around Melakuta and uh, Naruma in this part of New South Wales. We could still see some very strong wind gusts as well. Strong winds also expected through, like I said, the Blue Mountains. Gusts won't drop below 90 km an hour or severe thresholds into the Blue Mountains or the northern part of the Blue Mountains until much later on this afternoon into early this evening. But winds will be very quick to reduce after about 4 or 5 o'clock and it's actually looking like it could be a bit of a calm night through parts of the Blue Mountains and especially into the Snowy Mountains as well. Cool, calm and collected later on tonight. So a big change from what has been over the last couple of days, that's for sure. Winter's weather is going to continue across parts of southeastern Australia, not so much for the mainland but definitely for Tasmania. You can see showers are still 
still expected to be very frequent for Tasmania uh, throughout the course of this afternoon and this evening. As showers will continue to pile on into the west coast of Tasmania through tomorrow and then into the first couple of days of September. Showers can be quite frequent through parts of the Victorian and South Australian coastline and then from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday onwards more showers and storm fronts expected to move through Tassie as well. Rainfall doesn't begin to clear off properly for much of southeastern Australia until about the 4th or the 5th of September and you can see whilst we will still see the odd winter storm move through parts of South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales and Tasmania, conditions will begin to get a little bit drier after about the 4th or the 5th of September at this point in time with less rainfall, less storm fronts coming through and less shower activity expected as a result. I'm yet to see how much snowfall we've seen across some of the higher elevations through Victoria and New South Wales. I imagine it's a lot and considering that we're still seeing some, uh, heaps of snowfall and heaps of rainfall get piled up into the mountains, I imagine snowfall is still continuing in a pretty significant fashion right now. But I imagine the worst of the snowfall is most certainly over and you can see the snowfall forecast throughout the remainder of the week. Not looking anything too flash at this point in time. It's pretty much all behind us and even now towards the next two weeks in mainland Australia in stark contrast to what we're expecting over in Tasmania, there's not an awful lot of snowfall on the forecast, which means it's a pretty safe bet now to assume that the seriously strong winter storm activity uh, and even the moderately strong cold fronts are going to begin to pull further south of New South Wales and Victoria, at least for the next two or three weeks or so until they may return in towards later September. Tasmania definitely won't be spared from this snowfall. Have a look at this up to around that 50 to 60 centimetre mark around the Lake St. Clair National Park and some significant accumulations between 30 to 50 centimetres expected through the southwest wilderness region and into the central plateau. We could even be seeing some good snowfall accumulations as well, with snowfall making it into the highest areas around Hobart and into the Mount Wellington area as well. There's still plenty of snowfall to talk about for Tasmania, and it does highlight the stark difference between the weather that we're expecting in the next two weeks for the southeast of Australia and for Tasmania. Tasmania is still definitely gripped by those winter fronts and those roaring 40 trade winds, bringing in those showers and storms on a very frequent basis. But for southeastern Australia, it looks like things are now going to begin to calm down a little bit, which is good news indeed. And again, that's highlighted very well on the rainfall forecast here. Not much rainfall expected in Victoria, New South Wales, not at least any predictable rainfall into the next seven days, whereas down in towards Tasmania, some very significant falls can be expected across the west coast, especially after about the 5th or the 6th of September, rainfall really does begin to pipe up for Tasmania, also to a degree for the southeast corner of Australia, but it is a little bit of a wild card forecast at this point in time. But yeah, nonetheless, a very strong storm, a very significant weather system, multiple severe weather warnings are still out in effect. So if you are under the influence of those severe weather warnings and make sure you are hunkering down, prepared for this storm here, don't venture out unless it's absolutely uh, imperative that you do. The storm's only going to persist, especially into Victoria. It's only going to persist for the next couple of hours or so. So just stay inside and enjoy the wild weather this morning from the inside of your house as opposed to being on the roads outside where it is very dangerous, especially with the winds that are blowing around right now and the cold temperatures as well. I imagine it's not a very pleasant day to go outside at this point in time across much of southeastern Australia. Severe weather warnings will likely be reduced and drop them later on this afternoon and into tonight. I doubt we'll see any severe weather warnings persist beyond midnight tonight. Uh, so the storm system really is winding down and the week of winter weather that we've seen across southeastern Australia is also to a larger degree really winding down. It's going to return to a lot more calmer, cooler and uh, much more collected weather in the next seven or eight days or so as opposed to the wild weather that we've seen over the last five or six it's still very hazardous uh, marine based activities because the storm system is still very close to the New South Wales coastline and as we mentioned previously strong winds are still occurring as you know across the New South Wales and the Victorian coastline so still very hazardous surf conditions right now uh, so stay safe stay inside marine based activities obviously not advised whatsoever uh, throughout the remainder of this week and probably until about tomorrow afternoon at this point in time. That's going to do it though for southeastern Australia. We're going to head up in towards North uh, Queensland now and start contrast the weather that we're seeing over in southeastern Australia. We're expecting a bit more summery weather and a bit more wet season weather to pipe up across North Queensland. The rainfall is now back on the forecast models. I thought that that was a little bit of a trip from the forecast modeling yesterday, but you can see between the East River and the GFS major forecast models still calling for a bit of light rainfall to occur up in far North Queensland throughout the first week of September. Still expected to pipe up around the 3rd or the 4th of September at this point in time. You can see it here on the 4th of September, we are expecting that rainfall to pipe up through the 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th and showers expected to be pretty persistent from, from the week starting on the 4th. So Wednesday, uh, the 3rd of September out to about Thursday, the 11th of September, we're going to be seeing some rainfall pipe up across far north Queensland. It is expected to be really light. We're not expecting much in the way of rainfall up there. 50 millimetres, 100 millimetres. So this is probably the roof across the Casper Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest. And a few light showers expected to scatter into the large population centres of Cairns, Townsville, Bowen and Mackay around north Queensland 
Queensland and into more central parts of Queensland as well. Driving this rainfall is going to be a southerly flow. You can see a southeasterly trade flow expected to pipe up from about the 4th or the 5th of September. That's going to really bring those showers in through the 5th and the 6th. And showers are expected to be pretty much on and off, but somewhat persistent through the 5th, 6th and the 7th, easing off a little bit on the 8th and the 9th, and then returning a bit on the 9th and the 10th. And you can see showers are expected to be an aspect on the forecast pretty much from this point onwards out until the end of the forecast modelling uh, here on the 13th of September. And long-range weather predictions are actually calling for a pretty turbulent middle part of September into a later part of September and you can see that really begin to build here over central Australia especially into the later parts of September here you can see multiple areas of low pressure and storm systems are expected to develop after about the 10th of September and that could give way to a very wet period across the Northern Territory inland parts of Western Australia and then eventually into about the 15th or the 16th of September through parts of Western and Southern Queensland. Long range forecast modelling has been quite reliable in the last couple of months especially across Queensland the Northern Territory and Western Australia especially when we're talking about forecast uh, or forecast between the two and the four week range. In fact, I'd say that long range forecasting in that uh, kind of caliber has been about 70 or 80% accurate in the last year or so, especially for Queensland. So this gives me a great degree of confidence in saying that sometime between the 15th out to the 20th of September, we can expect a high energy period to unfold across inland parts of Queensland, and that will likely uh, trail in towards Southeast Queensland eventually as well, closer to the 20th of September. Again, the details on this are still very uncertain. None of the reliable forecast models have picked up on it just yet. And you can see between the other major forecast model of GFS here, whilst it is calling for rainfall and storm front activity between the 10th and the 15th of September to develop in towards southeast Queensland and New South Wales, again aligning with our high energy period that's on the forecast. It is in a completely different weather event and a completely different forecast uh, or forecasting scenario at this point in time. So take it with a grain of salt, but I would be uh, inclined to say at this point in time that it's uh, probably a reasonable thing to expect some rainfall developing across inland parts of Australia into the second or the third week of September. Uh, right now, that's definitely a reliable thing to be counting on, I would say. Rainfall accumulations, uh, definitely not something that we could be betting the house on at this point in time. But you can see between the 10th and the 13th of September, just this four day period here that the forecast models go out to, you can see we are looking at some pretty significant rainfall accumulations. Wide for, widespread falls between 20 to 60 millimetres and isolated falls up to 100 millimetres are a possibility into parts of the Northern Territory. And that should give you an idea of the rainfall that is going to come down uh, through parts of inland Queensland if this rainfall band does materialise. We'll be watching it like a hawk if it does get fed with it moisture coming in from the Indian Ocean which looks to be the likely reason behind this rainfall here we will likely see some pretty heavy falls here and there through parts of inland Australia or comparatively heavy rainfall for this time of the year keep in mind we're still very much in the middle of the dry season across WA the Northern Territory and Queensland and it's not until late uh, December or even early January when rainfall begins to pipe up for Western Australia so this is very very early season stuff that's for sure in fact it's probably going to fall closer to last wet season than it is to the next wet season when the rainfall does actually begin to properly pick up across parts of WA. That's how uh, kind of in the middle of the wet, uh, dry season we are right now for parts of WA and the Northern Territory. North Queensland though, rainfall accumulations aren't going to be anything special. Like I said, falls between 50 to 100 millimetres do look to be possible through parts of the Casper Coast. This forecast model here is actually not expecting anything over about 50 millimetres on the European forecast uh, and lighter falls expected further north around Cairns and then down towards Townsville. In fact, only a few millimetres expected a piece for both locations. I would say that the rainfall forecast in far North Queensland is is generally best uh, kept as a lower level estimate. So if we've got 50 millimetres on a forecast like this, generally you can expect a guaranteed 50 millimetres coming through for parts of the Casper Coast, and that can sometimes balloon to 100 or even 125 millimetres. That's what I found in my experience up in forecasting weather for far north Queensland. But it is uh, definitely worth noting that this rainfall is not any concern whatsoever. We're not talking about convergent zone activity or significant rain band activity, definitely nothing in the way of tropical low activity. Uh, it's just going to be that southeasterly trade flow bringing the showers up towards far north Queensland. Flooding is obviously not expected from rainfall like this. It's not even enough to flood a drain pipe or cause a puddle up in towards far north Queensland. So obviously no concerns whatsoever with this rainfall at this point in time. That'll do it for Far North Queensland. Just briefly towards southwestern WA, it's looking high and dry for the next five or six days or so. And with that, it brings a very concerning aspect to the forecast, that being frost. Temperatures are expected to be quite low in the next couple of mornings. You can see already this morning a very cold start through parts of the weather. Minus one here at Newdigate, zero at Norseman and multiple other weather stations. I fear all also very close to that zero degree mark, wandering at zero degrees. Uh, and a lot of other stations very close to zero. Tomorrow's going to be cold as well. We're expecting freezing temperatures to develop around late grace 
Jason Hyden. Uh, and again, frosts are definitely anticipated to occur both this morning, I'm sure they've already occurred, and then tomorrow morning, and also Monday morning as well, we could be seeing a few frosts into the more western part of the wheat belt. Now, frosts are no stranger to this part of Western Australia. That's nothing out of the ordinary for this time of year, but it is cause for concern considering we are now at the crux of uh, the cropping season of 2025. Yeah, we definitely don't want to be seeing frosts and severe frosts could wipe millions of dollars off the uh, wheat, canola and uh, barley crop across southwest and western Australia through the uh, wheat belt. So frosts at this time of the year are, are a very, very big concern. And when we're seeing temperatures like this, it definitely keeps a lot of people on edge. Severe frosts across western Australia normally develop when we get down to about minus two or minus 2.5. We're not quite there yet and temperatures aren't expected to go that low and they will go that low for a few spots and temperatures will get a little bit more milder on Tuesday and Wednesday for a wider swath of the wheat belt, but temperatures still very, very cold through a, a lot of the western wheat belt on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, so at this point in time, frosts are a little bit of a concern through WA, but I don't expect there to be anything too severe in the way of losses. So if you're a farmer watching from the wheat belt, I think that you've kind of dodged this kind of frost outbreak here. If we do see something in towards late September, which is generally when we're at the most concerned for frosts or frost activity through mid and late September, I'll be the first to let you know. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel for the latest weather updates on that. But at this point in time, I don't think that these frosts are going to be anything too severe. Temperatures are just not going to be cold enough for severe frosts through parts of the wheat belt, but definitely some isolated frost activity and even some more widespread moderate frost activity is expected into the next couple of mornings across Southwest WA. Just thought I'd throw that in there at the end of the video for your Saturday morning. That's going to do it though for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you found it enjoyable and informative and preferably both. And if you have, then please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. The support lately has been much appreciated. We're also 48 subscribers away from 45,000. I don't do this for the numbers, but if you could subscribe to the channel, it'd be a big milestone for me as well. Check out the Facebook page if you haven't already, but that is going to do it for me. Have a great Saturday and have a great weekend and I'll catch you on the next storm. Stay tuned tomorrow as well. Wet season forecast at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Make sure you're ready for that. That's all for me today. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.